House will come to order. House will please come to order. Members, take your seat. Before we get started, Mr. Gilliard. House will come to order. Members, will please take your seat. Mr. Gilliard, let me get you some order before we get started. We're going to need it anyway. Mr. Gilliard. Speaker, I'm going to ask the uh, Charleston delegation, anybody wants to stand with me? Uh, this is in reference uh, to the mother, Emmanuel Nang. Uh, any of my colleagues want to stand with me? Uh, you're more than welcome. As many of you know, the church itself sits in the district that I proudly represent. So in doing this, uh, I felt, or we felt, uh, this is how we should start our day at the State House in honoring them. Now, the mother, Emmanuel Nine, shall ever be in our hearts. They shall dwell forever with God. The Honorable and Reverend Clemente Pinckney, the pastor of Emmanuel African Methodist Church and his members, the other souls, sent their herd to Wanza Sanders, Sharonda Singleton, Myra Thompson, Ethel Lance, Susan Jackson, and the Reverend Daniel Simmons Sr and Reverend DePayne Middleton Doctor. And I had to get through that because most of these people uh, that resides in my district, I had, many of us had personal relationships with as far as being our friends and our colleagues. We cannot ever add to what was their sacrifice and example they gave their last measure of devotion to their church, and in doing so, stands as an example of Christian life. We humbly thank them for their example. Grace and forgiveness started with the people most hurt, the families. I want, we want to thank the families who shocked the world with their acts of forgiveness, at forgiving a man who took the most precious thing from them. The Christian acts of forgiveness by these families have been heard around the world. Sometimes we use the phrase, the shot heard around the world. Well, their acts of forgiveness have circled the world gently calm our hearts. We are reminded of Colossians 3.13, which says, as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. They react with forgiveness that truly surpasses our human understanding. I firmly believe that they may well have calmed what could have become a calamity on top of a tragedy. We are all reminded of that. We pray that our state, our nation, and the world can embrace with unity the examples of forgiveness which begin with our family's response to unspeakable horror. Our hearts will always be with the Pinckneys, his precious daughters, and each of the other family members. We want to thank the people of Mother Emanuel EME Church, a famous church, 
a church built and sustained by the African-American community through the decades, no, the centuries. It was built and burned and then rebuilt, surviving natural and man-made storms. It will survive. We want to thank the leaders of the AME Church who led us through our time of grief and memorialized the Emmanuel Nine with a glorious service just over a week ago. And all the many, many people in the church who through unknown acts of kindness, both large and small, made this more bearable. This has been an emotional time for all of us and very much for the people of my district. I want to thank the people of my district for the love and compassion they have shown the world. That is, the leadership they have shown thrust upon them, but not shirked. Keep in mind, this was a community already rocked by the murder of Walter L. Scott. I want, we want to thank the President Barack Obama, who spoke eloquently of our loss. We want to thank the people of Charleston, her leaders who both responded professionally and with compassion. Mayor Joseph P. Riley and his staff, Police Chief Mullen and his officers. We want to thank President McConnell, at the open doors of the College of Charleston, Governor Haley and our state law enforcement personnel. And we would love to thank the leaders in here who demonstrated love, compassion, and unity to the world. This has brought forth a new understanding and a new way of seeing ways to peace and justice. So what do we do now? The scales have been shed from all of our eyes. The blindness that was our affliction that prevented us from seeing that which divides us has been lifted and we now see what needs to be done. The right thing to do is what we call the healing thing. The gentle laying down of the past and a hopeful road to the future. And I would be remiss knowing that all my Charlestonians and all the great organization that help us calm the world and show the world that in Charleston, South Carolina, and in the state of South Carolina, we are people, all creeds and color, united, united as one. I want to give thanks the organizations such as the NAACP, the SCLC, Rainbow Push, the National Action Network, the Coalition for Change, you work with us and show the world that we can put all our differences aside in the time of need and call to leadership the true leaders of the state in which we have thus far to this second in this state house, and especially in the House of Representatives, we are showing the world as one, as one we can achieve anything. God bless you all. I before we begin this debate, as Mr. Gilliard so eloquently referenced Paul's epistle to the Galatians, 
you must forgive others as God has forgiven you. Let us all stand in a moment of silent prayer as, he, as we remember the nine members, the Emmanuel Church who gave their lives, and their families who continue to grieve. Pray with me if you would. Amen. Thank you all so much.